Hello and welcome to my video on how to troubleshoot the uh, tail lights or the lighting system on a RV. This happens to be an 03 uh, Fleetwood Pace Arrow motorhome, but uh, the techniques will apply to any vehicle really. So here's what happened. So I have a little pigtail here, which this goes into my tow car. It's a spaghetti cord that goes back to, to light the tail lights of my tow car from the lighting system of the um, motorhome. So these two plug together. But what happened is I accidentally uh, forgot this and pulled my trailer hitch off and pulled these wires loose where two of them shorted the ground, knocking out my tail lights and my turn signals. Well, chances are, if this happens to you, the trouble is going to happen from back here, exactly what I'm working with if the tail lights all of a sudden go uh, dark and won't work, and you realize you, you had wires to come out, then the troubleshooting is just to find out what fuse uh, is causing the problem. But this is a good uh, starting point. Uh, you can check with a, uh, a trouble light. This would be ground, and you could have the lights turned on, the turn signal, and check. One of these will be brake light uh, and uh, your tail lights, turn signals right there. And so you could do it this way. I don't have my lights on. But this is the ground, and you can see if you have your lights, like in the trouble I had, is I had a light here, but no light on any one of these. So, chances are, and I know what happened is I blew a fuse, but you got to find the fuse. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so uh, let's go to the front of the vehicle, and with the manual, you're going to need the chassis manual. Now, the fuses you're looking for are going to be under the dash and in the engine compartment. It's not the coach fuses. The coach itself has a fuse panel, electrical panel that has uh, uh, fuses in them. You don't need to worry about that. That's strictly for the coach and not the chassis. So you want your chassis owner's manual to find your fuse blocks and see usually you'll have two or three fuse blocks and uh, I'm going to show you how to find them. Now we're in the driver's compartment and I'm going to show you the problems that I had from those wires pulling out. There were two, li uh, two wires that pulled out and grounded and I lost uh, the, the turn signals and the brake lights and tail lights. So, uh, along with it, I lost my electric brake and ABS light come on. Okay, so here's what happens. You turn it on, and I had no turn signal. I have turn signals for the front, but none for the back, and I didn't have uh, uh, turn signals on the tow car. Well, uh, along with that, I didn't have flashers or brake lights. So when, when you put the hazard zone, I did not have any flashings. And you can see nothing's happening. Also, one other thing is when you have the key on, on most motorhomes, there's an electric uh, assist brake that if you lose power, uh, you can push the brake pedal and you'll still, you'll hear a motor uh, uh, crank up and it does not work right now my electric brake does not work so all of that went out from the two wire shorting back there now where to look to find the fuse because I know when you short wires to ground there's a fuse in the circuit and it's gonna blow so here's what you gotta do I want to run my battery down you go to your chassis this is a workhorse chassis yours may be another one but it'll be an owner's manual and i have mine marked for the fuses you want to find 
the fuse panels. Uh, either get some help if you can't find out uh, where they're located uh, ahead of time and look so that if you ever lose your lights on the road uh, due to a wire coming loose or something, you want to be able to correct it right away and have some spare fuses along with you of the type you need. Okay, this is section four and it's the fuse and circuit breaker uh, layout for a W22 motorhome. There's other style motorhomes in here. Here's for a P42 commercial. So you have to identify your particular model. These books are written for several models. Okay, so I know that I have a W22 and after checking there's two fuse blocks. We have an internal fuse block which will be under the dash somewhere, usually over on the driver's compartment. And there's another external fuse block which is under the hood uh, and we'll go and try to find it. It'll be somewhere near the battery usually uh, under the hood in the engine compartment. Okay, so that's the two fuses. Now, if you'll look, uh, they draw the fuse panel in a certain way, but you got to line it up with the actual way that the fuse block is mounted in your particular vehicle. They're showing this like with these two, um, these are relays or circuit breakers, and there's another uh, identifying mark up there. Mine is actually mounted like this with these two over to the right. So you have to orientate the fuse block picture to the way it's mounted in your vehicle to find the proper fuse that's identified uh, on the fuses. And right here is a rundown of what each uh, fuse is uh, doing. Like I lost the turn signal fuse, which is right here, turn signal switch, park neutral, position and BU lamps. Okay, that fuse is right here. So that was the fuse that was bad for the turn signal. It's located under here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's take you around and you see how those those two are the little circuit breakers I was talking about. Uh, so that turn signal uh, lead was uh, over to the left. So I'm just uh, alerting you that that's the block we were dealing with. Okay, now I found the fuse and saw that it was blown and replaced it and had my turn signals. But I still didn't have my electric brake or my hazard lights. So I got to looking and in the external fuse block, there's a fuse right here that's called a stop hazard. That's exactly what I was missing, the stop and hazard uh, lights. The hazard lights don't come on with the key on, and they should. And uh, plus the stop light wasn't working when I would press the brake. Okay, so let's go out and find this external fuse block. Okay, I'll see you outside. Engine compartment is open. And there's two areas here. Uh, this is the battery control center. There are some uh, fuses in here. Uh, and I even checked those and there's a panel here that shows you what the fuses are and uh, a little circuit panel um, and explaining the fuse location. But none of those were the ones that were causing the problem. And I looked around and this is the external fuse block that we were dealing with. So I put my test light there. There's an ear on both sides. You depress them and you can pull this out. And then under here 
is a layout and right there is the stop hazard it's a 20 amp fuse right there that's the most likely source of the problem but if you're not sure you can go through and check each one of the fuse with a test light so what you do is buy you a basic little test light that with an alligator clip and this is an LED style so it'll work either way uh, and you can see positive or negative but main thing is you want a light to come on this is ground we're looking for battery the way the lights work is the tail lights are, are all of the lights are hooked to ground on one side and like when you step on the brake you send a signal on the brake lead which is a, a positive signal so that's what we're looking for and that's what blows so I'm going to just go through and you could check each fuse like this you should see voltage on both sides now it's actually going to be one of these small ones for the tail light not these big huge ones so you would just there's a little metal tab in there you touch it and touch the other side you should have lights on both sides and you just go through if you can't determine which one might be the trouble check them all you don't need to pull them out to test them now let's go to the one in question and we will check it right there I've got a light on the other side I don't have a light so I have a light there no light there that is a bad fuse it should be going through both now here's what it should look like light there light there so that's bad and somewhere you should have a fuse puller and I have one right here and this thing will just slip right over the fuse and you squeeze and pull it like that and if you look carefully hold this up to the light you'll be able to see a, a place missing in a little uh, metal loop in there so if you hold it up to the light you can actually see that it's missing now whenever you replace fuses replace it with the same value that's there and also check in here it'll tell you what the proper value is so if somebody changed it with a different uh, size fuse so this will always be the, what you follow not what was in there okay I happen to have and usually they're color coded so I just happen to have another one 20 amp and I can just put this right back in there push it in there and then I'm going to test it and I touch it here and touch it on the other side there I have a good fuse now my light should work properly let's go back in and check it out now let's uh, turn off turn it on now I'm going to hit my hazard light you see the flashers are going well, I know my tail lights are flashing. We don't even have to go back and see them. Also, listen to my electric brake. And, and I can actually, my brake actually works. There's a motor in there that will help slow you down or operate your, your brakes for you, a power assist. So if you don't have that sound, and there's probably something wrong with your tail lights also. So now you see how to do it. So let's go back out and button everything up. Everything is working. My turn signals and in the back they're working and my brake lights are working. Okay, that affected everything that uh, we had. Two problems because two wires shorted and grounded. Okay, so hopefully this will help you with your problem. Whether it's a car, uh, a RV, a Class C, or even... Uh, uh, other types of vehicles okay now this is the way it goes there's some terminals down here that this little bottom part fits over so you just carefully line it back up and you want to get this on good because there's sealers in there to keep water from getting in so push her in place until it snaps 
and then it should be locked in. So that oh, let me put my my little unit here back in its place. There's a little place right here that it'll fit. That if I need to pull one out again. All righty. Now let me tell you. If I would have had this problem on the road, this happened in my driveway uh, before we got ready to leave, so I was able to fix it easily. Uh, but uh, trying to, if you don't know how to find this or where to start, it's a very difficult problem and the stress is unbelievable and you know you can't drive safely without your lights, so a little checking ahead of time will help you greatly find your fuse blocks and get familiar with them a little bit in case that happens because you're always messing with the plugs in the back or they could get shorted now that would be another problem this happened to be something that happened and the wires actually pulled out so um, you have to watch for that shorted wires if you plug a fuse in and it blows right away uh, with the plug unplugged then chances are back there you've got a nicked wire so what you would do is look at that pigtail all the way around where it uh, uh, comes in contact with the metal frame and chances are it's been cut down and it's touching metal somewhere but if you replace the fuse and everything works then chances are you just had a momentary ground, which I explained uh, the wires pulled out. Okay, so get you a little test light and have it available. And uh, get your owner's manual and uh, investigate your fuse blocks and see how many you have. Okay? All right, good luck on uh, your troubleshooting if you ever have, have this problem. All right, till next time.